Hey guys, what is an intro? I don't know. It's me, Juniper Justice, doing my one-year Q&A. I legit cannot believe I have been at this for a year. It's been kind of a wild ride, but I am so happy to be here, and you guys are a huge part of that. Thank you so much for all your wonderful comments and just feeding me those sweet, sweet endorphins. Okay. I may or may not cut that interruption from my cat. Uh, let's get to the questions. Um, Raiden? 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 Is this Metal Gear or Mortal Kombat? I don't know. I'm gonna say Raiden. Raiden asks, Did you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Sir, I'm trying to watch the ballet. Yan Khan asks, Favorite script? Uh, that is a really difficult question to answer, because the answer is always, inevitably, the one I'm working on right now, <laughs> which, as of today, the 20th, the one that I most recently recorded is a, uh, it's one for Halloween month, coming up soon. It's based on Fallout, and I went with a, like, really weird tone for this one. Which is always fun. I love doing the unexpected tone shifts. As for past videos I've done, I'm, of course, very attached to my first one, which I think was called Your Yandere Girlfriend Sucks at Kidnapping You, and also the first collaboration I did with Vanilla Velvet. Um, sir, 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 if you sit on my lap, you have to be still. You have to be still. You... Why? And also the first collaboration I did with Vanilla Velvet. You can see that one on her channel. Yandere Best Friends Kidnap and Share You. So much fun. I love both of those scripts. And if those hadn't been so good, I probably would not be here today. I mean, and I'm not just saying this because you're the one asking the question. I know a Yancon script is always going to be good. But those two in particular really got me hooked. And I also love the Hyper Harpy Girl. It seems like a lot of other people do too. And the, uh, Evil Queen. Can't quite bring that accent up on command. Um, and also, an older one, Your Yandere Friend Has a Monkey's Paw, which was the first video of mine ever to get any dislikes, which was devastating at the time, too. People gave me thumbs down. Two? Two people? Uh, yeah, I got over it, but it was really rough at the time because I was super proud of that one. And also, I should probably say that the entire month of October is just going to be so good. I love October. I feel like I should say this in like a... Oh, so you want to play, huh? Anyway, <laughs> ASMR roleplay channels usually use anime girls for their thumbnails, but you've gone the more interesting route. Thank you. Of using your own unique art style featuring flat, brightly colored subjects with the suspiciously striking lack of eyes. What made you decide to use this art style? Do you make the art yourself? And how do you think this has affected your marketability? Also, when are you going to be doing that Macho Man Randy Savage audio? Oh, God. Oh, God. I, I, I feel like I need to answer this comment as Macho Man Randy Savage, but... Um... Well, the short answer is... <laughs> Velvet did it. She did all my channel art and made my thumbnails for the first couple of months I was doing this. She thought it would be unique, and I agreed. I, I, I like the minimalist style. I think it looks pretty cool. But I think the main reason she chose it is that, uh, it's free. There are a lot of these images for free on Canva, which is what I used to make it. Stop! You can't drink that! Anyway, I can't draw at all. I have no capacity for visual art. But I can put pieces together to customize these minimalist images, and it's fun. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the anime style, and I have considered making the change, but paying an artist is not currently in my budget, and besides, I think my style makes me kind of stand out from the crowd. And as for marketability, 
Well, this is where I was going to say that the cream rises to the top, and now I'm super nervous, and I'm just going to skip it. Uh, next up. Mm -hmm. Operator Plays asks, What's your favorite type of character to play? The kind that has something to hide. If she tries to present herself one way, but something else comes to the surface over the course of the script, that's what I like. And also perky and adorable. And if it's all of the above, even better. Cesar Ruiz asks, have you ever wanted to do a live stream? If so, what would you stream? No. <laughs> no. No. I'm not great. Unscripted. Uh... A lot of awkward pauses, scattered thoughts. I don't think that would be fun for anyone. Plus, I don't even know what I would stream. Games? I like gaming. Don't really have time to play anything these days. Uh, and I don't think you'd enjoy watching me play, because... A lot of awkward pauses. <laughs> Up next. Random Brit asks, do you prefer scripts that are well-written? Or scripts with interesting concepts. Also, what's your mother's maiden name? What street did you grow up on? And what's the name of your first pet? Uh, fish, fish, and fish. <laughs> well, actually, my first pets that were just mine were two goldfish. I named them Flossie and Freddy after the younger set of Bobsy twins because they were fish. And I was three, and alliteration was super important to me back then. And I don't feel at all uncomfortable sharing that, because I had completely forgotten about it until this very minute. So I don't think I've used it as my secret question anymore. Mother's maiden name and street I grew up on, that's my business. Uh, anyway, uh, if I have to choose, I... Can you not fight? I'm recording. Sir and Madam. <sighs> anyway, if I have to choose, I definitely prefer a script with an interesting concept. Because I can fix bad grammar, I can tighten the pacing, I can punch it up with jokes if I need to, or I can just perform it in a way that makes the less, let's say, polished writing seem intentional. But if a concept is, like, fundamentally uninteresting... There's nothing you can do about that. Lumvi? 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 Uh, Lumvi asks, Top 10 anime of all time? Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for asking for a top 10 and not just one. Because if there is one thing I am just psychologically incapable of doing, it's narrowing anything down to a single favorite. So... What anime do I like? Um, kind of a mix, this and that. I loved Sailor Moon back in the day. That was formative for me. And I still do, really. And that one led me to Revolutionary Girl Utena, which I used to watch in secret. I was young, starting to realize I was a bit different from my friends, but I still wasn't quite sure why. Utena did not really help me figure myself out. Would not recommend as a guide for getting through puberty, but would recommend as an anime. And I can really see the trajectory from there to Oran High School Host Club, which is everything I want, despite not even having any magical girls or princely duels or anything. I don't think I would be the person I am today without those three. Um, what other things I like? Uh, my love story is the cutest goddamn thing I have ever seen. I don't even really like romance anime, like, like just romance, but I like that one a lot. Um, I also like Citrus, if you want some lesbians, which I always do. Um, oh, and I just recently watched Happy Sugar Life. I remember a couple years ago on Tumblr, people were just melting down because, oh no, oh no, it's so problematic. It's so bad. You can't watch this. It's it's bad. And yeah, it is problematic and bad. It's the point of this dark, 
psychological horror anime. Guys, I'm so glad I finally watched this. Thank you, Yan Khan, for mentioning it in my comments, which finally got me to take another look. Like, I'm not even on Tumblr anymore. That was exhausting. Um, what have I listed? Five, six anime? Um, what else is there? I really liked Helsing back in the day. Haven't watched that one in a while. I don't know if it still holds up. Um, the first anime I ever watched was Vampire Hunter D. I was a little kid. It came on TV. I didn't know what it was, but I assumed this thing is animated, therefore it is for me. My grandparents walked in on me watching it. They were horrified, but it was a life-changing experience. I learned some things about monsters and boobs. Wow, I'm still too short. What are the other two best anime in the world? I don't know. Let me think. I feel like I should say Cowboy Bebop because that's a classic. And I, I used to have the soundtrack that I would listen to just, like, constantly. I don't think that's my favorite, though. I loved it. I'm definitely forgetting something big. I've also watched some real classics, like classic classics, like Rose of Versailles. I never finished that one, but what I watched of it was really great. I should finish that. Some random guy asks, What? Well, my understanding is that time is an ordering of various realities. At certain times, some things exist and others don't. But there is a competing philosophy that suggests that time is a dimension of reality on a par with the three spatial dimensions, and hence that all things, past, present, and future, can be said to be just as real as things in the present. I think my cat is pooping. Chris Leahy, hey, I've been pronouncing it right this whole time, go me, asks, what is your social security number? Two. I'm older than I look. Seriously, though, do you listen to other ASM artists? And if so, which ones? Well, uh, there's this one, maybe you've heard of her, Vanilla Velvet. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think there's anyone in my audience who has not heard of Vanilla Velvet. She's my best friend. We got into this together. Really, I got into this because she told me to. And she always does great work, so if by some bizarre happenstance you're listening to this and you haven't listened to her work, go check it out. Um, as for others, I have to confess I don't really listen to ASMR that much. Especially not the traditional trying to set off the brain tingles kind, because that just doesn't do anything for me. I do listen to the roleplay ASMR sometimes, but not a whole lot. I know there are a ton of talented people in this community. I just, I, I wish I had more time. If I did, I would listen to more. There are a couple of people I listen to. I'll link them in the description. Um, there is a uh, Venture VA. She's great. She has, she has a gorgeous voice. Very soothing. And great taste in scripts. I don't listen to her consistently, but every once in a while I'll go check out her channel and binge a few videos. And half the time I'll find that she has chosen to do either some of the same scripts that I have or have on my list or things with similar themes. And for male artists, um, Jupiter, he has basically the same taste as me, which is to say, good taste. For a while there, I would go... I would go look at his channel and see that inevitably his most recent video was the one I was about to do. And I'd just be like, oh my god, I can't do this now. I might do it anyway. Or maybe put it off for a week or something. He also has a really great voice and good delivery. There are plenty of others who I know are great and who I do listen to, but I'd say those two are probably my favorite. Okay. Um... Does it rhyme with salamander? Uh, anamander? Anamander? Anamana? Do 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 do. Anyway, this guy asks, since you started this channel, what do you think was your biggest challenge? I'm gonna say drinking enough water. I can hear my mouth clicking right now. I can hear my mouth clicking right now. And I'm gonna have to go in and edit that. <laughs> And I don't want to. There are actually certain sounds that I'm really sensitive to, and wet 
mouth sounds is the worst. <laughs> like, especially the sound of chewing. I, I can't stand it. But the sounds that my mouth makes when I have not had enough water, uh, close second. Top five favorite foods. Um, I love Chinese. Could eat Chinese every day. Brownies, fun to eat and fun to make. Macaroni and cheese, especially with stuff added in, like peas and tuna, or bacon, mm, or hot dogs. Coffee's not a food, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and drink some right now. Oh, coffee. That's only four. Um, shoot. You know, I'm really not a picky eater. I will eat pretty much anything, especially if someone else cooks it for me. I, I just, I, I love to be cooked for. <laughs> I like cooking for myself, too, but if you make me something, then you have my heart. That's just how I work. So I'm going to say my fifth favorite food is whatever you're bringing me, friend. Um, if you had to pick three songs to sing in front of a live audience, oh god, which ones would you choose? Well, you've already heard me perform 4 minutes and 33 seconds. That's my first choice. What is the name of that song that Michigan J. Frog sings? I don't know the title. But you know how it goes. Oh god. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime gal. Don't think that was the right note. Send me a kiss by wire. Baby, my heart's on fire. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me. Etc. You know. I hope everyone gets this reference. I know they don't actually show Looney Tunes on TV anymore. So, so the joke is that with an audience, I would clam up. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't sing well in front of an audience. It was actually pretty hard for me just to sing into a microphone. Why am I so nervous? Why am I so anxious? I don't know. And also, why do I keep singing for you guys? Because you give me positive reinforcement, that's why. Anyway, uh... There is one song that I did once sing in front of an audience for the school talent show back many, many years ago. It was actually a Christmas talent show, so I sang a song from a pop boy band Christmas album. It was a Hanson song. I don't remember which one. I can definitely tell you I did not win that talent show. What's your favorite quote? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't have a very good memory. So even if I want to remember, like, the sentiment of something, the actual words don't stick with me anymore, which is horrible, actually. I used to have a great memory, and my entire life was words, and now they just fall right out of my head. That's what long-term depression does. Cool. Of all your videos, which are you most proud of? I'm honestly pretty proud of all of them. I don't think there's anything I've done that I would not still stand behind. Although some of them uh, could use some editing now that I know what I'm doing a little better than I did when I started out. The Evil Queen script that I posted this month, I did an accent and it slipped a bit, but it's probably the best accent work I've ever done. Hoping to do even better with the sequel, which the writer is working on at this time. Which I'm definitely going to do. And I'm super proud of some of the ones I've already done for October, but I, you, you don't know those yet. You'll know them when you get there. Some of what I'm doing for October is good, and some of it's fucking great. It's a pretty decent mix of cute monster girls and genuine horror. And some of them are really scary. I'm pretty good at being scary. I didn't think I would be, but I am! Yay! I'm terrifying! At least occasionally. Last question. Do you have a random talent you don't normally get to talk about? Well, I used to be a dancer. <laughs> Which is weird because I have no sense of rhythm. Like, I'm really struggling 
every time I play the ukulele. So you would not think that I was on stage for literal years of my life. But yeah, ballet and tap. And I was pretty good. But my younger sister and two of my cousins are also dancers, and they're all, like, way, way better than I ever was. Which is cool. I'm so proud of them. But also, like, I wanted to be the best at something. Eh, it's okay. Point is, I am kind of the jack-of-all-trades of my family. I'm pretty good at a lot of things, but there's always someone better. Which actually kind of works out for me because I'm super competitive, but like in a quiet way where they don't know I'm competing with them. <laughs> uh -huh. And they'll never listen to this, so they'll never know. Will Souls asks... Souls? Is it Souls? I hope it's Souls. Where did the idea for the minimalist color block style for thumbnails come from? Like I said, velvet and budget. Also, will there be more serialized stories like the exchange program? Um, probably? I mean, there's going to be a sequel to The Evil Queen, and uh, there are two Hyper Harpy stories, and if uh, Excited Kitty ever writes another one of those, I'll definitely do it. I don't generally like to write sequels to other people's scripts, and so far, I don't think any of my original scripts need sequels or invite sequels. But maybe someday. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Do you want that? Y'all like sequels? I don't know. The Youngling Slayer asks, What is your favorite place you visited? Or, alternatively, where would you like to visit? A few years ago, my grandparents took all their grandchildren on a trip to the old country to see where my great-great-great-grandfather was born. Tiny little village. It was just lovely. And I ate so much. <laughs> I, I want to go back just for the food. But still, it was absolutely amazing getting to take a family trip overseas. But most of my traveling has been within the United States. I think I have been been to almost every state. Not Alaska. Not Nebraska. Did I go to Nebraska? I think I drove through it. Uh, anyway, there are a few that I have not visited, but I've uh, taken a few road trips, which were amazing. I love my country. I love how different all the different regions are. It's amazing to be able to see and compare. If I could choose one place to visit again, probably be somewhere in the southwest um the very first trip i ever took was to new mexico which i loved it i don't know if that's specifically the state i would want to visit but that general area honestly i'm not sure if i'm meant for the desert or the beach because i love being near the coast i love being near the water but i feel very at home in the desert so i could go either way the one thing i don't like is being cold i am always cold so definitely someplace hot. All right. Second question. When do, when, when do I get to read your Star Wars fanfic? Well, most of it, most of what I wrote back then is lost, but I was going to dig this out and read it for you. Um, I'm going to find it and edit that in later. <laughs> we'll see what I come up with. <laughs> the Bread Bird asks... Do you ever feel dread from remembering the gorgeous but cold, suffocating, infinite emptiness that surrounds our tiny dot of habitable space? Yeah. Also, have you ever traveled? And if so, what's an interesting thing that happened to you on your adventures? Well, like I just said, I have traveled quite a bit. Was terrifying. I thought I was gonna die. So that was interesting. Glad I landed on my leg and not my head. Let's just leave it at that. Beetle149 asks, favorite color? It's green. Green is my favorite color. That's part of why I chose the name Juniper, because I thought juniper berries were green. Turns out they're not. Uh, yeah, but the, the two colors 
of green that are on my uh, profile image there. The kind of blue-green and then the acid green. Velvet and I both thought that juniper berries were one of those colors, surely. We didn't look it up. <laughs> uh, we're dumb. Brian F. asks, What's the weirdest thing you've seen happen in life that you can laugh about? In a good way. Um, I find myself laughing at things that have happened to me more often than not, even if they were devastating. Sometimes especially if they were devastating. Because, like, you have to laugh or else you'll never get past it. Who am I trying to kid? I never get past anything. I'm holding on to things from the third grade. Which I guess kind of leads into the second question. What's the best advice you've gotten about anything? When I was a little girl, and I was so terribly shy that I could not even call my best friend on the phone, my grandmother gave me the advice that I should become an actress, and I should act like a person who was not shy. And it took me... 15, maybe 20 years to put that into practice, but it worked. I can act like a person who is not about to vomit from nervousness. And while that really doesn't help my anxiety very much, at least it helps me get through situations that back then I would just freeze up and not be able to handle at all. So I can act like a person who is not anxious, and I can also act like a person who thinks... The horrible mistakes she made in the past are actually just funny. Ha ha ha. Oh, God. And finally, William Moreno asks, Did you have any fears or hesitation when starting out? Oh my, yes. Yes, this is terrifying. I'm still nervous every time I post a video. It's not as bad as it was in the beginning, because no one's ever been mean. You're all so nice. <laughs> you, you all tell me I'm doing great. Constantly. Which is what I need, thank you. But, uh, to be perfectly honest, when I started out, if Velvet had not been in charge of my channel in the beginning, and posting my videos for me at first, I don't think I ever would have done it. I didn't post on Reddit for the longest time, because, I don't know, I thought they'd chase me out of town with torches and pitchforks. Like, I, why? Why would they do that? Why did I think that? There's no good reason. That was dumb. That was so stupid. Anxiety does not work logically. Second question. Is ASMR slash roleplay something you've always found interesting and wanted to take a shot at? Or was it something you later wanted to try out after working on audios with Vanilla Velvet? We both talked about getting into it at the same time. She went for it first. I thought, this could be fun. This could be a good thing to do, but maybe it's not for me. But I went on Reddit, and I read a bunch of scripts, and a lot of them were definitely not for me. Like, I'm not great with slice of life and romance and, uh, you know, the regular stuff. But then I started reading fun stuff. Comedy scripts. Yandere scripts. Monster Girl scripts. Stuff I actually wanted to do. And I'm glad I did. Because over the course of doing those, I also learned to do the slice of life, wholesome girlfriend stuff. Like, the very first script I ever tried to do, Velvet found it for me. It was a very short one. It was sweet. It was wholesome. It was leaving a voicemail about wanting to make a relationship work. And I just couldn't do it. I really tried. I was there for like 20 minutes trying to get out the first line, which was, Hey, sweetheart. Just, just, hey, sweetheart. I could not say that and make it sound natural. Now I can. So I actually considered doing that script for my uh, anniversary special, but it seems like the writer's not actually active anymore. And it was posted to a different community than the one I usually get stuff from. So I decided to just skip it and do this instead. Anyway, third question, how satisfied are you with the channel so far? And do you have any goals you want to reach? Well, I was hoping to get to 10,000 subs by my anniversary. Didn't make it. That's okay. I'm sure I'll get there. I'm really happy that the channel continues to grow and find new people. And even if it's not the, like, crazy rapid growth Velvet has seen, you are all... So great. 
And I'm happy to have you here. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening to my silly little audios and commenting and uh, just making this so fun for me. <laughs> like, I really want to emphasize that I know I'm putting out a product for you, but I am getting a lot out of this. Thanks to all the feedback you amazing people are giving me. So, uh, well, that is my last question, and that seems like a good way to end this. How long is this audio? Good God, it's over an hour. I have some editing to do. Bye!